Hello. Good afternoon. It is a, a daily thought with a bit of a twist. I've invited one of the, the better looking members of the Spurs community to join me. Sean <laughs> from the Spurs Talk Show. How are you, my man? You good? I'm good, mate. Yeah, good. I'm a little bit disturbed by all of this Paratici noise, though. I can't figure out whether it's um, good, bad or indifferent, ugly. I don't know what it is. It could be a nothing burger. It could be a disaster. <laughs> yeah, do, do you know what? That's, that's absolutely it. I think, look, because of obviously because of the link to Tottenham now, him working there and and, and this going on automatically as Spurs fans we go, well, how does that affect us? Me, me, me. Yeah, me, yeah. Me. Um, <laughs> but, but it's great. It's something to talk about. Um, let's start, Sean. Let's jump straight in. And welcome to anyone who is watching. Please whack in a like, subscribe uh, to both uh, Savage Talks Football and to Spurs Talk Show. And uh, put your comments in the chat and we'll read them out. Um, let's start. So what's happened is this. It's... Reports are stating that he is under investigation for information rigging, false corporate communications and false invoicing during his time at Juventus. Yeah. And that he is going to be, I suppose, what, subpoenaed, so to speak. To come in, something, yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so From your point of view, Sean, what is all this? Break it down for us in layman's terms. What What's going on from your perspective? Um, as far as I can understand it, there's been an investigation from the for the seasons like 2018-19 to 2021-22, or sorry, 2020-2021 rather. Uh, that was the old investigation, and it, it incorporated like 48 different officials uh, across Juventus looking into the Ronaldo deal, looking into apparently the uh, Romero deal, and looking into a whole bunch of other deals where allegedly at least this is what the new thing is but there was there was there was this thing going on back in january we were first made aware of this shit back in january where paratici and 48 other people were were getting investigated for different things but it all sounded like it was under 48 48 people yeah let me um i've got i've got a comment that someone sent through to me a couple of uh a couple of minutes ago and it was it was obviously taken from someone else like from a from an article so i just want to read it out it said uh, it was on April. So Paratici was indicted back in March for inflator, uh, inflated player valuation charges, along with half of the Serie A, and it was thrown out of court. On right. April the 15th, there was a quote that said, Tottenham Hotspur Managing Director of Football Fabio Paratici is a free man. According to Gianluca Di Marzio, Paratici was acquitted, along with the other 58, sorry, Italian club officials wow. indicted by... Italian financial regulators and charged with financial mis uh, malfeasance over inflated transfer valuations. The charges against all the accused Ital Italian clubs have been summarily dismissed. Paratici was charged with basically cooking the books for various player swap deals while serving as a director of football at Juventus. So that was the stuff that was happening before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happened now is there's something about underhand like uh the, the something to do with the covid loan or covid um the, the covid period juventus players apparently would were, were take it like were given some respite in their salaries and it wasn't accounted for and people were paying money under the table so i'm not entirely sure i'm not coming at this from an from an expert so forgive me guys yeah, the yeah i don't think any of the part i don't think any of the part it's fine yeah yeah so it's i might fine. say things completely wrong here but uh, from what i gather now it's it's something else it's like um not accounting people's salaries correctly and bonuses and, right. and misrepresenting that stuff. But I don't know if the two are related or entirely separate. What I would say, though, is the reason why I'm a little bit more worried than I was a couple of days ago is Paratici, um, the deals like Bentoncourt and Kulisevsky's loan transfer fee, all yeah. of that stuff wasn't going to be known about in any of the financial reports when the initial investigations happened. Because they've just been like this year's or the 21 22 season has just had their financial reports released in September for Juventus. And right. th that, that, all those deals with Romero, um, Kulisevsky and Bentacle, all that stuff would be on, on that set of financial figures. So I don't, like I say, I don't know whether or not there's anything that maybe they've audited those figures and found more wrongdoing. Or whatever. I mean, I, I honestly don't know. So essentially, Paratici is caught up in some what looks like <laughs> some cooking of the books in all sorts of different directions. 
him so, and the Juventus board, and and the, if the if the rest of the Juventus board have resigned, would you resign from your job if you were accused of something and, and, and you were innocent? Well, well, this is this is the thing, isn't it? And and this is, I suppose, where look. And first of all, don't worry about not getting everything one hundred percent spot on. Let's be fair; none of us are going to get one hundred percent spot on. The fact that they're all being indicted tells you that there's so much more to this story. Yeah, yeah. Um, from a from a Spurs, I suppose, from a Spurs point of view, not even a Spurs fans point of view. Um, what are the potential ramifications of this for us? I mean, is is it a case of where it will get so bad that Paratici can't be seen to be working and it will look so bad on Spurs that Levy has to go, hang on, no, no, you're, you, you know, you're taking us through the mud here. Yeah. You know, or is it going to get to the point where they go, right, well, Paratici can't be involved in any football transfers whilst the investigation is, is going, going on. on. Yeah. What does that mean for Spurs? Do you know what I mean? I mean, where does this leave selfishly? Obviously, yeah. this this hurts Juventus, but selfishly, where does that leave Tottenham Hotspur? Mate, two days ago when the when the news first broke, I did a video that said I think there's three possible ways you can look at this. Uh, one is how does it affect Conte? Because the noise about him wanting to go back to Juve. If if Agnelli, the president of and the kind of somewhat owner, the kind of pa- uh, puppet owner, if he's not in, not in the way anymore, because him and Conte used to be best mates and had this horrible fallout, acrimonious fallout. And that was a stumbling block to the kind of, to make the idea of, Par- of Conte going back to Juve make sense. If he's not there anymore, then you could make the argument, well, if there's nothing else to worry about, Juventus, if Ju- Juventus are fine, maybe Conte would go back and maybe that makes yeah. it more likely. But then you go, well, on the other hand, if Juventus is a sinking ship, whether they get some sort of massive you know, financial punishment, they're already... 350 million quid in the loss and that's without cooking the books like that's the books that they've that's the yeah, books yeah. that they've represented let alone the ones that are the, probably the true the true you know scale of the issue so do you want to go back to a sinking ship probably not so then i was like well actually maybe juventus might need to kind of come around and do player sales to yeah. to, to make to make ends meet and then tottenham with all the relationships we've got with benson core and, and and kulisevsky their, their player mates in the dressing room Fabio Paratici, all that stuff, Conte. Maybe we can go and lift Locatelli. Maybe we can go and get the Danilo or the Ligt or whoever else. Right, right Sean, can, can you imagine from any of this, right, that in this transfer window, the club that is being indicted and being, you, you know, being dragged through a legal situation, the ex-director of football that is, can you now imagine those two teams doing any more business <laughs> together in, in that time? Yeah, exactly. It's like it's like a, it's like two drug dealers that are both <laughs> under investigation going one yeah. one last deal, boys. One last deal. No yeah, one's yeah, watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's just madness, isn't it? Like, I mean, what what does this mean for deals like uh, I mean, Western McKenney and people are yeah. talking about uh, people are even talking about Rabio and this yeah, yeah, yeah. player and that player. I mean, f- for me, I, I look at it like this. I mean, first of all, it's not good from a PR perspective for Tottenham Hotspur. Looks awful. It, it, it does look awful, doesn't it? It does. And no matter what you think of Levy, no, no, look, this isn't about what anyone thinks of Conte and Levy. This is just a basic th- human feeling. Yeah, your reputation is everything in life. It I think. doesn't look good. Right. Yeah. So if you're Levy, I mean, I, I get, I'm guessing something's being done at Tottenham right now. I'm guessing that Spurs will have their own people looking into this, questioning Paratici's people and saying, hey, how, how worried do we need to be here? Because... This could derail what, not that I have much hope we're going to do a lot, but this could derail what we need to do, right? It's not just about transfer windows, mate. Paratici was signed up to to rev- like to, to re reconfigure the entire Tottenham football like, yeah, yeah. process from, from yeah, yeah. hiring all the directors of nutrition and performance, all that crap, like the, the youth scheme, the scouting. They've, they've hired like four, like four or five new scouts every four or five months. Under Paratici, if Paratici gets indicted, where like the entire uh, the wheel come off here, mate? The, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, listen, I get it. I mean, I, I, look, I, from my point of view, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Paratici anyway. Nothing to do with yeah. all this. Um, if he goes, he goes. But like you said, it's it's the wider piece. He he is being brought in to be Mister Football, right? Yeah. Not Mister Transfer Window. Um, if you're Daniel Levy, um what's your first port of call? What, what's going on behind the scenes at Tottenham right now if you're Daniel Levy? Depends how much he knows, right? Like, first and foremost, if he hired him and didn't know about this this stuff that's in the background, 
I don't know. You you hire people, right, for your for your career, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, if you hired someone and 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 asked them, hey, look, is there anything in your background that we need to know about? And they said no, and then it turns out that they're in being investigated by like the MI five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. how would you feel? So, if Daniel Levy knew about it, maybe it's not as bad. But if he didn't know about it, I'd be absolutely furious. Yeah, I'd be furious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, I mean, like, the timing couldn't it... be worse, mate, could it? Like, we've got this. The window's four weeks away. It's the most right. important window that I think that Tottenham have had in a long time because of all the shit that's happening with Newcastle catching us up, and you know, Liverpool and United maybe getting taken over. This is a distraction that nobody wants. Right. I mean. From your point of view, then, does this fundamentally? Let's take this. Let's take this down to ground zero. Does this fundamentally affect our transfer window? The fact that Paratici is the main man there, or is this one of them things where he will just be frozen out for the moment, and the scouts and whoever else and Levy pick up the reins and carry on as usual? Oh yeah, I don't. I mean, who knows, mate? Who knows? But if it if it if it does if it's the latter, and Daniel Levy's back at the negotiating table. Then that's almost as bad as 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 Dan, as Paratici being found guilty anyway, because Daniel, we know like, you know, I know that people think of me as a, as a Levy sympathizer, but I, the one thing I agree with everybody on is that he shouldn't be the one negotiating deals. He's terrible at that stuff. So, um, yeah, look, if Daniel Levy does do, I don't know, mate. What, what, what do you think will happen? I, th- this is the thing. I, I just don't know. I mean, look, the, look. Every part of me is cynical about Tottenham Hotspur. It, it's been built into me, ground into me in the last. 40 years the cynical part of me says oh well here's the excuse for not doing anything this window right yeah. oh well we were gonna do this deal yeah but Paratici was busy in court fighting his name or whatever yeah yeah but yeah I I don't know look my worst nightmare here from a selfish point of view is that then it does push the deals back to Daniel Levy and we're back in Jed Spence territory yeah where we're looking at young players that the deals that should be done in overnight take months to get done um, but I mean, yep. the, the overarching issue for me, forget the window, the overarching issue is what happens then if Paratici, if it's untenable for him to stay at Tottenham Hotspur, what I do we do? It is untenable. If, if he's, if he is caught up in the middle of fraud, defrauding the Italian tax office and misrepresenting accounts for a football club, the size of Juventus, I don't think that if you are, if he's, and I don't believe for a second that you could be the director of football and not be aware of something that's going on. Right. I just don't see it. So if, if he is caught up in it, as much as it's going to be an absolute horrendous setback for Tottenham, whether you like him or not, at least there's some level of structure at the moment. Um, I don't like, I don't know. I think you have to get rid of him, but, I'm even thinking, even the deals that would seemingly be super easy to get done right now, like the Malinovsky deal. Yeah, he's at he's at Atalanta. If yeah. like, Atalanta were were smack bang in the middle of the Romero deal because yeah. Romero was on loan at Atalanta. Atalanta had the option to buy from Juventus, and when Tottenham went and said, "Well, we'd like to loan with the option or the obligation or whatever it was to buy Romero," Atalanta had to then go and exercise the option to buy you buy Romero from Juve so that they could then immediately loan him to us. So Atalanta might be caught up in all this stuff. And then Malino- the Malin- and that's- and Malinowski is the easiest deal that's so, ever going to get done. So the, t- the, t- the two deals that I've been hearing about are Malinowski and Weston McKay. Yeah. <laughs> slap, slap bang in the middle of this little, of this little love affair of a uh, love affair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look, it, 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 it's a tough one, isn't it? But for me, um, Look, I, I think if, if he's found guilty, obviously it's untenable and he needs to leave. Then, yeah. I mean, realistically, how many years does that set Tottenham back? Because whilst I'm not a great fan of Paratici, and you know that, yeah. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> hence our yeah. WhatsApp conversations this morning, I, I do worry what happens if we then have to get another person involved and yeah. how aligned are they going to be with what Conte and Daniel Levy want and how does that work with everything that's happened to date? It just worries me that this is a never-ending cycle of of issues at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Yeah, and it, it, it takes me our fault. Yeah, one hundred percent. And look, for me, if you if if there look, even if there's truth to it, the best you can hope for is that these things take years or a long, long time to to make any kind to to happen. It's not like you're caught arrested by a policeman with you know um you like a 
a balaclava and a, and a screwdriver yeah. or whatever with, with a bag full of loot. Like these things are investigations. So I don't think that there would be anything that happens immediately. However, whether Daniel Levy wants to give Paratici the, the checkbook in January, I think is an issue. If there was something that was to come out immediately and Paratici was, was released, a new director of football is not going to come in and have any like clear plan. He's going to have to formulate his own thing. That's going to be a long process of figuring out, coming in, first of all, analysing what, what he's taking over. And all that that means is that you're kicking the can down the road even further. And for me, I think that that would seal the, like, the nail in the coffin on Conte staying. He would leave. That's what I was going to go with this next. Yeah. It would also mean that Harry Kane would probably leave. It would also mean that, I mean, it would also mean that Tottenham would get left behind because if we weren't if we weren't doing any business in the January window, teams like Newcastle are going to just fly past us. Yeah, Liverpool yep. and Manchester United won't have sold their club in by January, but they might have done by the next window in the summer. And they, yep. their new owners will come in and go and spend big. Tottenham will get left behind at that point. If if any of that shit happens, the best thing that could if if the worst case scenario it's all it all explodes in our face. The best thing that could happen would be Daniel Levy and Enoch would go right. Time for a complete reboot of Tottenham Hotspur that doesn't include Daniel Levy or Enoch or Joe Lewis. Well, well this, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, look, <sighs> the, the the dangerous thing here for me, Sean, is when I listen to lots of YouTubers and, and, and ev- influencers, anyone in the football world talk, we all talk like it's fact. And obviously, we, yeah, yeah, we all course. know it's not. We all know yeah. it's... Massive speculation. Quiet. Massive speculation. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's, let's look at the speculation. Look, look Conte's only here, right? Forget my feelings on him for this. Conte's only here because he is Paratici's man, right? Yeah. So if that's true and Paratici leaves, that's another reason for Conte, who apparently already is 50-50 about staying, goes, well, hang on. Why am I going to stay here even more now? I've now lost the guy who's meant to be doing my transfer business for me. I've got to bring in a new guy. I've got to explain my, my process to, you know, then, again, if we're to believe this, I don't believe this, by the way, but if we're to believe that, well, Kane will only stay if Conte stays, the domino effect here for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club could be catastrophic, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Now, but it depends how you see all those things, right? Like if, you, if you're someone who's Conte in and back Conte, then you'll see it as a disaster. If you're somebody who looks at Paratici and calls him the Don, then you'll see it as a disaster. If you're somebody that... Um, you know, that doesn't think those things and that also can maybe see the positive end, the light at the end of the tunnel, that if it all does implode and and, and, it, and the shit hits the fan, then maybe just maybe Daniel Levy and Enoch and Joe Lewis would be like, do we really want to go through another whole right. rebuild? Is it time now? Especially when they're getting advised by all and sundry that Tottenham's valuation is at peak levels. Maybe they will list the, list the club. And I'm going to do a video in a, in a couple of days. I've got all the information ready to figure out what the, the right valuation would be. I think the right valuation for Tottenham looks very similar to whatever Chelsea's was yeah. uh, based on brand value, based on revenues and, all, and, and price earnings multiples, all that stuff. But for me, there's going to be 16 or 17 interested parties that are going to try and buy either Man United or Liverpool or maybe both. Yeah. Surely one of the 15 unsuccessful parties... Cool might turn around and say Tottenham aren't exactly a a, a bad option here. So, uh, uh, Of course. I mean, look, for, first and foremost, I suppose you, we've got to look at two things. When we look at new owners, well, I suppose there's more than two things, but let's look at the two big things. The first thing is going to be, can we make money? That, that's These guys are billionaires for a reason, right? Can yeah. we make more money? So if you look at Man U, tick. Liverpool tick because they're brands. You look at Spurs, our brand our stadium, NFL, the way everything's set up tick. The secondary thing for me might be, can we get success? At Man United, you would like to think, yes, the way they're set up. Liverpool, they've yeah. been winning things for five, six, seven years straight now. Yep. Spurs, would that would probably be the... the yeah, if a stumbling of, block. Yeah. We need a bit more to do. But look, as you said, Sean, we saw how many people submitted a bid for Chelsea Football Club. Yeah, lots. Now, there was loads, weren't there? Eight or I, nine, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. And I, I fail to believe, like you said, that no one would come in and buy Tottenham Hotspur if, if even if they hate football for the for the stadium, they would come in and buy us. But the the, the big thing for me is if Paratici does go, I think for me it, it needs to be as we said on the stream the other day. For me, I think the whole thing needs to be ripped out, and that's director of football, that's manager, and that's owners. 
I think yeah. if we factory get to that reset, point, factory it, reset the entire thing, a complete reset. And at that yeah. point, you, you acknowledge that Kane and Son are going to go, which yeah. I know everyone talks about that, Sean. Like if we move slightly towards that, I know everyone talks about that as though it's the, the worst thing that could happen to Tottenham. But we're not a million miles off that being organically happening anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There will be a day when Harry Kane has kicked his last ball for Tottenham. You know? Right. And don't get me wrong, in no way, shape or form does anyone want to voluntarily see Harry Kane go. Yeah. But I've, in the last couple of years, in the back of my mind, I've quietly been accepting of the of the idea that this is this is sooner now rather than later. He's he's gonna be 30. The man yeah. wants to move and win things probably. This will be yet another thing I reckon he looks at from, from our star player perspective and goes, what the what the F is going on at this football club? You, you, can, ima- you can imagine Manchester United get bought out by the Dubai Sports Group in May, April, right? Something like that. They, they just get their, their, their foot through the door just in time for the window. Then Harry Kane delays, 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 doesn't sign a new contract in January he could turn around and sign an absolute mega bucks. He could be, the new owners would want that statement signing. Manchester United may very well still need an absolute monster st- striker. And Tottenham, there's no way Tottenham will ever pay him 300 grand, 350 grand, something like that. But at Man United, he could get paid the same money as Cristiano Ronaldo. He could get paid 500 grand a week. And that would be a perfect way for him to finish off his career. At Man United, he'll still be able to get his, his uh, Premier League goal scoring record. He sorts out his family for yeah. the next five generations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, for me, it, it just feels like, and look, th- I say that it's, it's not this. This isn't the Paratici effect for me. This has been on the cards for, for a while now. We've talked about this a lot. Yeah. I feel like this club is, lots of people think it's going in the right direction. I've been, I've been very adamant and very vocal in my opinion that I don't think that's the case. People thinking that Conte came in and got us full, they see that as for me, that's an immediate, that's an immediate plaster, right? Yeah. But for me, there's so much surgery that needs to happen at this football club. And at the moment, I just get the feeling we're getting closer and closer to our surgery date. Now I'm not saying <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what it's like. You know, if, if yeah, you're getting surgery on the NHS, they go, Oh, you're having an operation in two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my arm is hanging off. Are you sure you can't bump up the list a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but you, you carry on as normal. You go about your normal day life. You yeah, get yeah. a year down the line and go, yeah, still got 18 months. Now I feel like we're in that last bit where arrangements need to start being made of, hang on, <laughs> hang on, this is creeping up because for me, I, I don't see that everything club. I I don't see that everything is in place with Conte, with Paratici, with Levy. I don't. I don't see that there's any any har- harmony there. There's any symmetry in the way yeah. this club needs to be run. And for me, it's going to be a skittle effect that one goes, and then I think they'll all go. And I'm, I'm at the stage where I don't. I don't care, Sean. I. I don't care. I almost feel it needs to happen. Yeah, I'm, 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 I feel, I see where you're coming from and I can appreciate your perspective. I feel like Tottenham are, like, this is why I thought that this, this, this window, this January window was so important because of the looming, you know, on the horizon, the new castles come in, the new money coming into those other clubs, like the last, last orders at the bar. If you want to get, if you want to drink that looks like success is going to be in January where you, I, you know, Whilst it looks like Tottenham are a, a, a mess at the moment, I do still subscribe to the idea that, you know, if you were to go and buy a class left-sided centre-back and a class central centre-back then and a right wing-back, you're only really three positions. I know that there's a lot of call for a creative midfielder, but I do think we score enough goals anyway. So yeah. I still feel like we're, we're kind of three major signings and a goalkeeper away from being in a place where we can compete. But if so it doesn't four happen, major signings. So four, okay, yeah, so four big signings. <laughs> four, four, yeah, yeah, four big signings. But I think that I think that Lloris, like that one's not yeah, something needs, not yeah. January. That's maybe a summer option. But three major signings. But if you could have done that in January, and there were so many options available in the centre back space that I think that you could have had those conversations. I still think we can, depending on what happens with all this other nonsense. But if all those things, if those 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 final holes are plugged, then the, the future could look incredibly bright. 
very quickly if if mm. they get those things done. But history has proven that it's unlikely that they will get plugged, right? But, but this is the thing, and and, and you, you know, like um, Phil P. Um, if you're watching, big up Phil always says to me. He, he and every time he WhatsApps me, he always signs off with the same way. He always signs off and says, "We're two players short." <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we've been, you know, yeah, been, two players you know, short for, ten, for 10 years. Yeah. For 10 years. And the, the thing is for me, I, I, I just can't see, I can't see what good comes out of this situation with Paratici. No, same. Then, then it begs the question of, hang on, somebody put it here. Let me just have a look. Um, uh, uh, Borodin has said, uh, Paratici and Conte are connected. I cannot accept that he knew nothing was going on during his time at Juventus. It yeah. all smells whiffy. Yeah. Is there a scenario, Sean, where Conte didn't know anything that was going on at Juve and, and, and now that he's come over to Tottenham? I, I think it's more plausible to me that Conte didn't know, but it's in, entirely implausible to me that, that Paratici didn't know. So, and if Paratici and Conte are like, you know, love birds or whatever, you know, birds of a feather, then then um I think that maybe maybe both of them left Juventus because they knew what was going on and wanted to jump ship before before the before the iceberg, you know, that was dead ahead came into sight. And I think that iceberg right now is is not only in front of the Juventus ship, it, it's also Tottenham are seemingly aiming towards the same life but <laughs> the same iceberg, you know. So I yeah. don't know. I, I think that I think this could all come. I, I genuinely am worried, my man. Like I, I go back and forth. I'm trying to find reasons to be positive about it, but I do think that there's a, there's no smoke without fire, and I think that Paratici looks like he's probably going to get wrote, wrote, wrapped up in this somehow. I mean, is there is there anything to be read into the fact that let's be fair, every time we're linked to a footballer now, it's someone who plays in Italy. Now, whilst I've got I've got no uh, in general, I've got no exception to that because there's some there's some really talented footballers out there yeah but i'm also aware there's there's three or four other top leagues out there as well that you could pick players from yeah could is this in any way an indication of this is why this is what's been going on that's why he only goes to italy well the only success i mean if you look i know you you and dave were going back and forth about the 15 players yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it's a little bit too early to judge the players from the summer which would be six or seven right but for all intents and purposes, the obvious success stories have all come from Italy and the, the failures have all come from other leagues, right? So, you know, sometimes you've got to like be an expert. Um, you know, if you're a master of one league and rather than being a jack of all trades, there's enough yeah. talent over there and those clubs are in financial, dis not just, I mean, I looked at that Inter, Inter Milan's results came out today. I read through them. They're in absolute sh shambles. The only two teams that are actually that can make ends meet in Italy right now are Fiorentina and Atalanta, and they yeah. only just just get into the green or into the black. Everybody else is is losing money every single year, on you know on a sliding scale of from bad to awful. So surely you know if Paratici is very good at picking up Kulisevsky and and um, and Udoji looks like he might be a good player, and obviously Bentancourt and, and Romero. If they're the four success stories out of fifteen that we can judge so far, then fine. Like as long as you're still able to do business, go back and deal with uh, go back and deal with Italy. But if one of the con if one of the outcomes of this whole thing is that he's banned from dealing in Italy, <laughs> then there's no right. point in having him because his track record in Spain, in Portugal, right. in England, and everywhere else is absolutely shocking. <laughs> right. Listen, this this is a very real scenario, right? I mean, look, we we don't know we don't know all of it. We don't know all of what's happened, and I'm sure it's going to be a lengthy, drawn out trial where Paratici will need to be there every day or whatever. But let's be fair: when these sort of things go to trial, they like to impose sanctions. They yeah. do. They, you know, they like to make example of these types of people. And for me, is it is it the honourable thing? For Spurs to stick by him and and you know wait for him, so to speak, or do Spurs need to be ruthless for once and do what's best for Spurs and go, listen, you need to go and sort that out. There might be a place for the for you at this club a uh, future date, but right now we're we're in the middle of a of a fight with Newcastle, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, City, and yeah. we haven't got time for you. Is I know that sounds harsh, but is that a reality of where we could be at? 
Yeah, and like I say, mate, if if one of the if one of the the, the uh, those sanctions you talk about is banning in Italy, he's not worth any. He's not worth waiting for. With it, with, I haven't seen him buy anybody work, that done rubbish business. Emerson Royale, Brian Hill come from Spain, both been failures so far, right? The players from England, Basuma hasn't particularly settled. I know they, we, that's a bit early to talk about those seven, but yeah, 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 most sure. most of the players that, that have come in from other leagues other than Italy have been poor. And the good ones are come from Italy. So if he's not allowed to deal in Italy, then what's what's what is worth waiting for? The only thing that there is a concern is he hasn't just signed players, right? He has signed all of those performance directors and the head sure. of nutrition and the head of scouting and the head of youth development, all that stuff. Are those guys are those guys like connected to him? Do they leave if he leaves? Do they want to work for a new boss? Right. Well, that- that, that, yeah. Absolutely. This this is the thing. I, I, you know, under what pretenses were those people brought into the club? Yeah. You know, what, what dream were they sold? Do they follow? Do they follow Paratici? Um, I mean, it it all feels a bit weird to me because Paratici came in and lots of Spurs fans got very excited by him. I think without really looking into him. So and what yeah. what I mean by that is lots of Spurs fans are going, "Oh my God, Don Paratici." He's cooking. I don't know if you remember nearly every picture that was going around Twitter and Instagram yeah, yeah. with him, oh, yeah. <laughs> him like this. And, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, who's he on the phone to? Who are we buying? Yeah. And that pissed me off, actually. He was like, he's trying to be the star of the show, wasn't he? Like on his on his phone all the time. And sitting down, in, the sitting down with the players. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. He, he sits, He, you know, what, what annoys me, he's at every game, right? He's at every game sitting on the bench. And I'm thinking to myself, I want my director of football out. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Want yeah. I want to see Paratici at every World Cup game possible. Yeah. Scouting. Well, I want to see that, right? But more than that is all my friends who are who are big Italian football fans. You know, I like Italian football, but they they love it. Yeah. All of them say the same thing about Paratici and that the Juventus fans didn't want him and that he didn't actually do a great job in right. terms yeah. of scouting players. The players he bought there were were the well-known players that were going to go to the best team in Italy. Right, right? Okay. That's the equivalent for me of back in the day, Man United going, who do we want to scout? Oh, we'll, we'll take that Rude Van Nistelrooy bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, makes sense. We oh, we'll take one Bastion Viron. You know, you don't have to scout them. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, everyone so, knows that. <laughs> so, so the thing yeah. for me is, how good... Is he? And just before you answer that, uh, Borodin, thank you so much for the super chat. He said, uh, so much common sense talked in here, guys. Big up. This up we try to talk common sense. We try to look at it with open eyes from both sides of the fence. But, Sean, how good is he? Why did every fan do the whole Don Paratici? What, 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 what had they seen that others hadn't? Well, his first signing was Romero from memory, right? And that came in and, and, and was like, wow. And then he obviously had a fantastic start. And also, you know, the baseline wasn't particularly, wasn't set very high with Steve Hitchin. I think most people, when when Steve Hitchin left, were like, it can't can't get much worse than him. So I don't listen, I don't know. Like I, I see, you know, I know you think low of, of Paratici. I know Dave Irish Hotspur thinks very highly of him. Yeah. I think it's too early to judge personally. I think that, like I said a few times now, I think that you can't judge really, even though I don't particularly fancy Richarlison as a footballer, that's not necessarily based on his performance at Tottenham. I just don't think he's as good a footballer as everyone else thinks he is uh, and never have. But mm-hmm. um, in terms of the set, like, I think it's too early to judge Bissouma. It's too early to judge, you know, even the ones that have done well, like Perisic. I think it's, you, you need to give a player a full season to really reflect on whether they've settled in or not, you know, and acclimated. I, and, I, uh, I mean, from, from my point of view, Sean, I mean, look, I, I, I'm old and ugly enough to look at this from both sides. I can I can acknowledge where I might be being naive here. But I look at it like this. Everyone knows that our weakest part of our team and has been for years is our defence. Yeah. I since since Matongan right. and Alderweireld got old. Absolutely. Yeah. And a new director of football has come in. And in the first three transfer windows, yeah, you've got Romero in, who, by the way, I'm going to say it, it's going to really piss people off. I think it's massively overrated. overrated. <laughs> But uh, I, yeah, do. I, I, know, I, I do. I can see the argument for that as well. Um, yeah. He hasn't we'll, played we'll, enough we'll, games, has he? If you've got time, we'll talk about Romero in a minute. If you yeah. don't have to rush off, yeah, 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 um, the you know, so he's had 15 signings. The first thing that strikes me is the bar is set solo in our back five. When you look at Sessignon, Royale, Doherty, Davis, Sanchez, Dyer, Tanganga, Rode, right? 
Yeah, yeah. But the thing for me <laughs> is, so bad. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, awful, right? Yes, some of the signings it takes a little bit longer to tell. Richarlison bought more as a backup striker. Yeah, harder to tell. Basuma hasn't really been given many opportunities. Harder to tell. But why has he not been able to upgrade that that back five? other than Romero. And then where I feel I might be being naive on this is I'm just assuming that Conte said, <laughs> this is what I want to deal with first. Yeah. But something doesn't seem right there. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Three windows, not addressing the main issues time after time, even just quickly, even after what we've been hearing this window is the done deals are going to be McKenney and well, not maybe now, but McKenney yeah. and Malinowski Again, not addressing the issue. So I, I'm not enamoured with him for that reason. Yeah, listen, um, for me, I think that you can make the argument, and again, speculation here, but just like Liverpool spent all summer hanging their hat on the Shuameni deal, and he ended up going to Real Madrid, when yeah. you identify the guy that you want, and then in, you think you're going to get him, and then you hang around and you and you and like you let other targets slip through the net, because you think you're going to get the guy and then it doesn't happen. It probably is a risk that some people take. And I think that they took it with Bastoni. I think they were hoping yeah. that something might have happened there. Obviously, it didn't happen. And then they ended up thinking, well, maybe we'll get him next summer. Maybe we'll get him in January. Or maybe we'll go on to get somebody else who's not available, like a Guardia. Whatever. I'm, I'm speculating here. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. they thought, well, if we, if we can't get our number one target, if you can't get the bride, don't settle for the bridesmaid. Long lay is an adequate step, you know, stop gap. And then you can make the argument whether or not you think Longley's been a better improvement on Davies or not. I don't know. I, I, I thought he was going to come in and, and be far better than he probably is, but I don't think he's done a bad job. So you can make the argument, I think, that maybe what's happened there is that there was an intention to sign someone brilliant, but that couldn't happen, didn't happen, and they didn't want to settle and sign someone on a five, six-year deal that was seventh or eighth choice if the first six choices were unavailable for whatever reason. And maybe they were looking ahead and saying, well, look, by this time next year, you're going to have Indica, you're going to have Skriniar, De Vrij, et cetera, all on free transfers. Maybe we wait. If we can get through until January, then we can go and try and push some boundaries, push some buttons with Inter. I don't know. That's that's the way I would think. If you're trying to see it from a rose-tinted spectacles, have has, you know, why did Paratici not fix the defence? That's the only real rational, rationale that I can find that makes sense. But yeah, where yeah. I don't agree is that uh, where I don't agree with Paratici's style is that for all the money that he's had and 200 million in two windows, you went and spent close to a record signing on a player that is either going to be played out of position or only play in his position if your number one striker in in your club who never rests if he's if he's unless he's got a broken leg he will he will he'll want to play yeah. spending a quarter of your transfer budget over two windows on a player in Richarlison, who first and foremost, I don't particularly think is great, but that's yep, by agree. the by. But spending a record transfer on a player that doesn't come into the first team. That, yep. to me, Paratici and Conte and Levy, I'm like, have, give your heads a wobble. What are you doing there? Sure, absolutely. And this is the thing, right? This is this is where bias comes into this, right? Now, and, and what I mean by that, not from you, what I mean by that is, if you were to say, and a good point there, if you were to say, right, let's look at the Richarlison deal. If you if you liked Levy but didn't like Paratici and Conte, and I liked Paratici but didn't like Levy and Conte, yeah, we will find an argument, right, to ba blame it on the person we do Don't not like. like. Yeah, <laughs> but the bigger picture sure. in all of this is between the three of them, right? Yeah, one man signs off the checks, the other one goes and is meant to be doing all the deals, and the other one is the manager that says, "This is what I need to be successful." Between the three of them, how have they come to the decision that our biggest ever transfer is going to be for a bloke that is, uh, I, I hate this word, a, a backup striker, a rotational yeah. option to go name, rather than addressing the issues that we have. And this is why I, 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 I completely blame Paratici for this, but I also blame Conte and Leedy for this because somebody at the club's got to go, hang on, hang on. We've got Kulu that scores goals. We've got Son that scores goals. We've yeah. got Kane that scores goals. We've signed Perisic, who in theory should chip in with some goals. Before we buy more goals... <laughs> should, yeah, let's should, buy more clean sheets. Yeah, Right. So, yeah. this is what no, I mean. I, I, I hear you, mate. I hear you. And on that one, 
on, on, on that note and several others that we spoke about, I completely agree. And it doesn't matter whether it's Levy, Paratici or, or Conte, whoever's foot is between the three of them. They fucked yep. up there, in my opinion. They really did. You know, and that's why I was I was waxing lyrical about like, I don't think you need a 50 million pound, 60 million pound player. I know that people think that this guy is you know useless in comparison, but you pay a quarter of the price for someone like Emmanuel Dennis, who's going to come off the bench. You know, the only thing that makes Richarlison make sense is if Harry Harry Kane breaks down with an injury for four months. But then or, you're... If he, or if he's signalled intent to leave. Yeah, or if he's signalled... And, that, and, and maybe so, right? But if right. you've got... If you're the four most valuable players at Tottenham Hotspur right now, especially after Richarlison's good performance at the World Cup, will be those four players. If you can't find room in your squad for all four of them, in when you've got... When, when you, you know, in an ideal snow when everyone's fit and you're starting 11, then then you're in my opinion, you're making a mistake. And the, you could find room for all four of them if you had a manager who yeah, played, but, who was happy to play a back four. And if you had a director of football and an owner who decided to buy a defender who can play alongside Romero, who can play in a back four. Like, like how in the first game, the Brazil manager played Richarlison up front. I think he had Neymar one side. Was it Anthony or Rafinha the other with Paqueta in behind? And you go... Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Tottenham I, could easily have Richarlison in the nine, Harry Kane in the 10, Sonny on the left, De uh, uh, Decky on the right, H Hoiberg and Basuma or Hoiberg and Benson Core in the hold. Emerson Royale might even look like a better player at, as a right back because he hasn't got, not saying a good player, but a better <laughs> player. Because <laughs> he has less responsibility to get no. forward in, in the right back role than he does in the right wing back. Cessnion could look better than he does as a left back. All you need is somebody other than because Davies can't do it, and Dyer can't do it, Sanchez can't do it, and neither can Tanganga, and probably neither can Longley. So all you need is someone, you know, if you and if, maybe this window you can go and get someone who can do that. Like a, I don't know, take, take your pick. There's so many of them. You, you know? We'll come back to that one second, Daryl. This is a good point, right? Do you know what? I actually watched a video from a YouTuber the other day. You know, what I'm talking about. I don't mind calling it out. Um, Constantly saying, oh, the Conte out mob, the Conte out mob. Can I just say, I did one stream where I said I want Conte out, right? I don't come on every stream going out, 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 right? I think more than anything, more than actively wanting him out, I've just said I don't really care. I think that's been my narrative, Sean, right? I, I, yeah. I just don't really care if he's here or not. And it's turned into that Conte out mob. I don't <laughs> think there's a Conte out mob at all, like you say, Daryl. I think... I think on, on Twitter, on Twitter, there's a growing noise about wow. it, you know, P possibly. But, but, but whether they're whether they're 13 year olds or or 40 year olds or knowledgeable or not, I don't know who who well, knows. Well, but well, this is the thing. But from the person I'm referring to, and I can I'll send you the video later, Sean. I know, it's, I know who you're about, yeah. it's fellow YouTubers that are content out. It's like, oh my god, I've said it once. Like, do, do you know what I mean? I, I don't I don't come on screen every single show screaming at the top of my lungs. I've explained my scenario. I've explained why I don't really care if he's here or not. Because for me, until the club is in a, a way where it can operate properly, we could have Postman Pat as manager. It doesn't really matter, right? At the moment, you've got you've got a you've <laughs> let's let's have a look. You've got an owner that is loved by fifty percent of the fan base and probably hated by fifty percent of the fan base. You've got a manager that is. Uh, you know, plays one set way of football and needs to be backed with top players, but will never be backed. Some people love his um, style. Some people don't. You've got a director of football who some think have done well, some don't think he has, and is about to go into Italian court. It's a complete shambles. Um, get, getting back to, so Daryl, thank you for that. I know you're, we're on the same All I, And for me, Daryl, like, so for my take on Conte, I don't, I, I'm happy for him to stay. I just don't like managers... Uh, who who are um, belligerent with one style of football? I feel like the game has moved on. Just like four four two was a thing for a decade, Agreed. and now no no one plays four four two. Systems Agreed. move on, and I think the dynamism and the ability to have different options and different different methods of um, being unpredictable. Because if you if you know if the opposite if you as a manager know that your opposition every single week are going to play the same formation with the same style, it's pretty easy to spend that week or the three days leading up to the game running drills and basically practicing ad nauseum the likely outcomes. Whereas if you don't know whether it's going to be certain players playing or certain styles or formations, you can't give the same amount of attention to any one setup that the opposition would have. And being unpredictable, I think, is a very important asset. And so for me, I'm more than happy for Conte to stay. If if we could have 
I, I understand that playing with a back four right now is difficult because of the some of the players we do or don't have. But yeah. if we did go and invest and have a better centre back that, that that then made the back four a conversation, mm -hmm. Conte still wouldn't use it because he likes no, his that, system. And I think that that is right. a frustration for me. No, absolutely. That's the frustration for me. Look, and at the end of the day, I I, I feel like we, we've got to stop labelling people, right? Like that Conte in mob and Conte out mob. I don't think it is that at all. Sometimes people just share their opinion. Sometimes, look, I'm not Conte's biggest fan. And yes, I've come on stream before and said I want him to go. But it's it's not like it's a it's not like it's a passion of mine to get him out of the club. I just don't care. The same way I don't care for Paratici. I care about Tottenham Hotspur first and foremost. Um, just quickly, going back to the Richarlison thing, and, and you know, Carl said here there's rumours that PSG and Madrid want Richarlison. So far for me, the two games I've seen Richarlison in the World Cup have summed up everything about Richarlison for me. The first game, excellent finish. Yeah, two goals, excellent finish. And you go, oh. Tommy the Lee. first goal was a, to a Tommy tap in, though. Oh, but there, so, yeah, the second goal was good. But he also had a hell of a lot of space as well. It looked, it looked like a training ground routine, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, of not taking it away because it was a big stage. Well done. Congratulations. Meant the world for the big guy. But it, it wasn't yeah, yeah. like they, they weren't worldies. No, 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 no. Listen, absolutely. Look, you know me. I'm not I'm not enamored by him at all. Yeah. Um, but then I watched the Brazil game, uh, I don't know, one of these days, three days ago against. Um, uh, I want to say, so who did Brazil play? play anyone? Oh, uh, Switzerland. Brazil played Switzerland. And it was one of those, every time the ball went into it, it bounces off him. He can't control it. Um, I the worst first touch I've, I've seen for a £60 million pound player. And, and this, is, this is the thing for me. This is the guy that between Levy, Conte, uh, Conte and Paratici decided, this is where the bulk of our transfer fees are going to go. That, for me, is such bad, I'm not saying management from Conte, management in general, that's such bad management, Sean, for me, of how to conduct a transfer window when you have so many gaping holes in your team. That, for me, I, I attribute to all three of them. I know you've got channels that will say that's just Levy, but yeah. you're not telling me Daniel Levy was screaming and shouting at Paratici to spend £60 million on striker. That's not the Daniel no Levy we know and love. Right? Yeah. I can, no, I, yeah, yeah. I, he probably gave that wrote that check like kicking and screaming. Right. Yeah. I can see that he probably went, oh, Spence, I'll have a bit of that because he might go up in value. There's not one part of me that... How, that how old is Richarlison? Is he 20, 26 or 25 or something like that? 25, so? 26 maybe. Someone in the yeah. chat, if they could tell us. But Look, it might, you... might end up being a shrewd bit of business because he, you know, he's at the World Cup. He has had a good, a decent World Cup. 24 Z. I, I see you saying I'm, I'm biased. You think I, I dislike him. I don't dislike him. I just don't think he's a 60 million pound uh, striker, and I don't understand why Tottenham spent the money on him. I don't think he's all that, but I don't dislike the guy. I'm really happy for him. He's a very, he seems like a lovely guy, a passion merchant as well, and I, I hope he goes on and gets the, uh, goes and gets the, the golden boot. But I just, it's not a dislike. It's just I'm not. I just don't think he's a spectacular player. I Agreed. Do you know what? Every time I don't like a player, that doesn't mean I dislike them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm sure, like, for example, Emerson Royal is a lovely guy. He seems very, very funny in his videos. I just do not think he's a good footballer. Yeah. And that for me, and this is my, my biggest gripe. I've said it time and time again. My biggest gripe. If you are Man U, if you are Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, if you go and spend £60 million on a backup striker, do it. Because you know what? you're still paying 50, 60 million pounds for other positions you need. Yeah. When you're a Tottenham who aren't as frivolous with their money, don't be going and buying that 60 million pound striker before yeah. you've invested in a right wing back or a set Opportunity half. cost. It's not, if you, if you, 60 million you spend there, 60 million you can't spend somewhere else. Uh, absolutely. Because let me ask you a question, Sean. Imagine Spurs this window had gone out and got a centre half, uh, the likes of uh, Botman. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. going to keep it realistic. I'm not going to go to the Bastonies. I like Botman. Yeah. Let's say we've got a Devry at 20 yeah. million or whatever. We've got a Botman, a, a, a Joachim Anderson, yeah. and a Kanji at 15 million. How much better would we look as a football team? And how many of those silly mistakes would be cut out because we haven't got as many bad centre backs back there? Yeah. Yeah. 100%, mate. I mean, the, the the difficulty is right. So I completely agree with you. Like we, we of course we should have signed someone like that. I was I was looking at this uh, doing a review yesterday about Sofyan Amrabat, 
who's a player yeah. that we were linked with in the summer and we were linked with in January, mainly in yeah. January. We actually spent the whole of last January basically being linked with him and everybody in the community rolled their eyes and were like, come on, this is such a Levy signing. And, and you know, no one wanted him. Obviously, he's had a really good season at Fiorentina. He's come to the World Cup. He's done really well for Morocco. He pocketed the Kevin De Bruyne for the game against Belgium. Like, it was really impressive. Now he's back on the radar. A lot of people now are suddenly interested in him. And, and sometimes I feel like you can make the same argument for Kim Min Jae. Tottenham have had four or five chances to sign Kim Min Jae over the last four or five years when he was in different clubs, when he was in China, when he was in Turkey, when he was in... Uh, and, and obviously since he's, since he's moved. And now people would still want us now to pay 10 times what we could have originally paid for him when he was you know, back in Turkey or back in China or four times what we could have paid for him in the summer because of his release clause at 50 million quid. I think sometimes people are like they, they roll their eyes or they're not interested in signing players that don't have big names yeah, because, or, that, or that, uh, that, that are a risk because we don't know whether they're going to acclimatise. But you can make the same argument for players that do have big names. My point being on this rant is whilst I 100% agree with you that we should have signed somebody like a De Vry, there's still that opportunity, there's still that potential outcome that players can come and don't acclimate as quickly as you want. Of course, you know? of course. I think for all, me, all in all, I think that Tottenham would have had, we'd, we'd be we'd have six points more or eight points more than we would have than we than we currently do if Eric Dyer wasn't in the team and somebody else was. What I would say to you is this, right? If if you look at it in the money we spent in in the window, right? the actual transfer fees we spent in last summer. So you're looking at 50 to 60 million pounds for a Charleston. I think it was 25 to 30 million for Eber Suma. Yeah. You've then spent, sorry, not you, you know, the Royal you uh, spent, uh, what was it? 20 million on Jed Spence or 18 12, million. No, 12, 12, 12, 12, oh, 12, 12, okay. 12 going, going up to 20 or whatever. If he does, if he does the 12 business. going up, we've spent X amount, however much we had to lay down on, on a doji. Long lay yeah, was twenty five on your doji. Long lay had a loan a loan fee of a million, right? So, so that, all of million. that, I quickly quick maths in my head. That's over one hundred and twenty million, right? So yeah. Plus, well, plus we had to pay for Romero as well, which was an extra fifty million or forty million or something. We had to pay for him. Sure. So, so yeah. my point is this: from that, take the Romero money off just for one second. Yeah. From that one hundred and twenty odd million, whatever in transfer fees, not not including the loan for Longley and not including a free for Perisic. Yeah, what have Spurs actually got in this opening four or five months of the season from all of those players that were spent, as opposed to actually going and plugging gaps? And this is where I can never get on board with Paratici. This, this is why Paratici and Conte, for me, between them, you're grown men. Sit down. Every Spurs fan can work out you need centre halves. Right? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I think that the Bissouma deal for, for me, the Bissouma deal was was a was a great bit of business. He hasn't, as of yet, proven to be proven to work out. But in and of itself, what I think that him just arriving has done is it's led to Hoiberg and Bentoncourt raising their game to new levels, which in, is is a win in itself, right? But. Um, at the time, the Suma looked like a superb bit of business because, for the most part, of last season we were we were on rags in the midfield. Skippy was out injured. We had nobody else. We had to play. I forget who it was. Uh, it was Hoiberg or Bentacore. And who else did we have? Was it Harry Winks? Was it still that was hanging around? Yeah, Harry Winks. Yeah, Go so on, Harry. We needed a midfielder, and we got a good I'm one. Not, I'm not doubting I think, that. I think I'm the Basuma like, deal was a good one. In yeah. general, in in general, listen, I've got nothing against. Basuma, for me, I would have used Basuma more, right? But yeah. but my point is this: we bought him with that money. We bought in Richardson, who so far to date hasn't been able to play in his favoured position and has scored in one game in the Champions League. Yeah, you've got yeah. Basuma who struggled to get in and is clearly third choice in a midfield two yeah. of Benton and Hoiberg. Yeah, you've got Jed Spence who's played about nine minutes of football across two cup games, I believe. Correct, and then you've got. Where was the other money? Um, Richarlison, uh, Foster, Perisic, a do a, 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 and whatever Doji. we have to outlay for a doji who's obviously on loan. Yeah. So when people tell me it was a good window and we bolstered the squad, for me, forget. Well, it, yeah, it, it turns out we haven't improved the first team. It turns out right, like all of the players that play. Right. If if we have our if we have our fully first team fit right now, then none of those players get into it, apart from Perisic, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, everybody else is. Uh, is still just a squad player. Yeah. So it hasn't. Yeah, it, I, it didn't work out to be. It hasn't worked out to be a. Um, 
a brilliant window in in in, in terms of improving us. It's it's improved the squad, but not just not the team. Um, let, let, let's quickly actually before I come to that, let's have a look at this. First of all, uh, THFC Caveman, big up to yourself. Um, for me, I've got no problem with Amrabat as a footballer. For me, it's just again, it's another one of is that is what needed? No. Nope. I had all the all the words there in the wrong order. Is that <laughs> what is needed? Yeah, yeah. Right? I, again, if if he was to be one of our first signings, it would beg the question: Well, what does that mean? We play a two-man midfield with five we've players. Already, yeah, we've yeah. already got Basuma who can't get in it. You've got yeah. Skip who's not getting game time, and you're not loading Skip out because you need him for homegrown. Right. You've got Papasar who's not had a look in. Yeah, and not gone on loan. So, um, Borodin has said plain truth. Is what does the club have to offer a really top quality player apart from a superb stadium and training facility? Our CV over the last 20 years is hardly glowing. Now, I'm going to ask you to answer this, Sean, but just before I do, backing onto that, Daryl said, you've got to sell the vision, Borodin. Our vision is like a heavy set fog. Now, <laughs> yeah. very good. Now, there's a lot to be said for this, right? Because if everything was great in the garden, like people are telling me, people have been telling me, Oh, Don Paratici and Conte is one of the best managers in the world. Stadium, training ground. Then what? Why? Why can't we attract them? What? What? What's going on? Yeah, it's a chicken and the egg, isn't it, mate? You know, like if, if all the players that Tottenham are after, there's probably going to be another club that's in the Premier League that is after them as well that are, that have got more history or more a high likelihood of success to offer them. Um, Manchester United can always pay more money. Liverpool have got a bigger brand. Manchester City are going to pay more money and have got chances of success. Chelsea will pay more money. And Chelsea are, you know, it's probably easier to get in for certain players to get into Chelsea's team than it is to get into ours in certain positions. Yeah. Arsenal look like a new team that's fun to be a part of right now. So if you're going up the players that would be that would be of that level, then most of those clubs, at least one of those teams needs help in any of the positions that we need help in and can offer them either same money, better chances of success or more money, same chances of success or a combination of both. And unless you have a, unless you have an owner, a chairman and a, and a, and a, and a manager who uh, can find the, I don't know, find the, um, the sugar on top, the spin to, to get them on board. But look, at the same time, you know, we signed Romero. Like we, we, we got, we did get some of these players to come in. When yeah. We offered, we, we had fuck all to offer them. So I don't yeah. think it's impossible. No, at all. Listen, I only want to go for five more minutes because I do want to watch the uh, the yeah. World Cup game. Um, just quickly, this this is an interesting one, and I hear this a lot. David Clark has said, "Big up, David." He said, "In the summer window, if Conte said I 100 percent need a centre back, then we would have ended up with a full four fifth choice centre back. Would you have been pleased with that?" Now, for me, Sean, I don't know what you think. This is a multi-layered kind of scenario here because, first and foremost, that all depends on the calibre that Conte first wanted, right? Because some players are just unachievable. Yeah. But then I look at the layer underneath that and go, well, hang on. Akanji's going at 15 million. Sven Botman's going at, what, 35, 40 million. Kim Min Ye has gone for whatever he's gone for. Yeah, we could have Joachim got him for 12 Anderson. million, 15 million quid. We got could have got him for. Yeah. Right. Joachim Anderson the year before. Brame has gone for a good price. Right. Yeah. So it's for me, I don't understand this. He's got to have his first choice centre back because what if that is unobtainable? There's, yeah. this, I, I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened in the summer. I definitely yeah. think, I think David's right. Yeah. I, and would you be pleased with that, Dave? Like the fans wouldn't have been pleased if we'd signed Kim Min Jae. We would, they wouldn't have been if that had happened or if the Amrabat deal had happened. If any of those things had happened, the fans would have been like, oh, that's fucking typical Levy, it's shit window. And then if the player had come in and done a good job, people would get on board it. But if the player had come in and struggled, people would have gone, people would have jumped on all over the back again. And that, that mm. compiles on the pressure. So the fans don't make it easy, I think. The expectation, sorry, the expectation mm. of... Um, of, of Tottenham fans in the stadium, for example, can, can add. But isn't add that why well? you get through at once, Sean? Like, let's be let's be honest, right? Let me let me just last last couple of minutes. If I chuck a, a scenario at you, if in the window just gone, Spurs had gone out and bought Botman and Kim Minier, right? Yeah, for a combined perfect. fee of for a, com a combined fee of what would have still been cheaper than Richarlison, and you said, right, my back three is going to be 
Kimminye, Botman, Romero. At least then you go, right. Amazing. Right. Now, even if one of them's a bit ropey, you say, okay, they've built that. That's the back three. We're going to stick with it. Right. Let them get to know each other. So, all right. In the first half of the season or the first year, it might not be brilliant, but they're getting to know each other and you're building. We didn't do either. We yeah. didn't buy one. So now you're, you're at the point where if we don't make long lay permanent, we won't next year, right? We which won't we won't. Yeah. So so next year you're back to Romero and Davies needing, and needing yeah. two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so for me, I think fans would have been well on board with a, a, I, I want to say an unknown, but a lesser known player like Kim Minye, with a player who was known like Botman and Sam Wright. There's your back three with Romero. Build on it. Yeah. But th this is what was baffling to me. We, we spent close to 75 million on Spence and Richarlison for two players that, let's be fair, Richarlison would not have played this much if it wasn't for Kulisewski's injury. And Sonny's right? injury. Yeah. And Sonny's injury now as well. Yeah. So, uh, no, 100%. 100%. I'm baffled by it all. Yeah. And, and, Whilst I'm happy to give Levy the, the, the responsibility for Jed Spence, you have to think that it's Conte and it's Paratici that decided to spend a third of more than a half, half of the summer's budget on a striker, mm -hmm. you know, that we didn't need. Well, we did yeah. need something, but we didn't need, we needed backup, not, not a, a first team player that sits on the bench. I, so I, I agree yeah, with you. Those, those two, those two have to share the responsibility on, on, in my opinion, poor asset allocation. You know. Yeah. Agreed. Listen, I'm going to end it there just quickly before I do a few, a few of the chats. Um, um, David, yeah. Listen, I'm agreeing with you. This is, this is what I'm saying. If, if Conte's first two choices were Bastoni and Skriniar, for example, as a football club, you know you're not taking both, or you know you might not be able to get them. That is Paratici and Conte's job to go. All right. They're not available, but now let's have a look at this other bucket underneath all the players that are. So I agree with you. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, listen, I will leave it there. I will leave it there because I want to get into, um, I, I want to go and watch Croatia, Belgium, because I think that's going to be a really interesting one. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you, drastic dictator, tyrant, but well mannered, who has said, Great show. <laughs> I really missed you, Sava. And good guest too. Um, we is that, Matt, is that Matt Hancock with a with a Hitler tash? No, I Some... thought it looked like Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg. Sorry, that's right. Yeah, Zuckerberg with a, with a Hitler tash. It, it could be either. It could be either. Um, guys and girls, listen. Thank you for joining our impromptu chat that was very much Paratici based. Um, one thing is for sure. What we do want is success at Tottenham, but what we do love is all the controversy that comes with it because it gives us a lot to talk about. So much. Sean, sure. thanks very much. Yeah, I'll mate. see you on Sunday night. Yep, 100%. Uh, everyone in the chat, uh, we will be live. Spurs review Sunday night um, at 9 p.m. Normally 7 p.m., but because of England, we're going live at 9. And I'll be back tomorrow for Severin Daigle's Friday huddle, probably without Brian. He's got a few things going on at the moment at 4 p.m. So I'll see you all then and big up to yourselves. See ya.